Hey everyone, welcome back to some new malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of our request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Home Address. I work at a small casino, and last year, management decided all employees had to wear name tags with their hometown on them as conversation starters with guests. As you can probably imagine, a lot of us had issues with that, but there was no arguing with them. Some people tried to not put their hometown down, but managers voted in for them to the best of their memories. A few people tried to be smart and write down places like Nunya, Peru or Hell, Michigan. Those also got vetoed. I however am a bit more creative than most and a big horror fan and choose a hometown that wouldn't raise any eyebrows. Unless you were actually paying attention, my choice actually slipped through the cracks. Although it is certainly a conversation starter, if you know. My name tag lists my hometown as Derry, Maine. Anyone want a balloon? The next story is called New Time Tracking Rules. I work in a small startup company of around 12 people. It's a very good atmosphere in the office and everyone puts their weight and is super motivated. However, our boss likes to micromanage us, even though he has no expertise in any of our fields. Especially us in marketing and design suffer a lot from that, since he will make changes to our strategies, posts or website, sometimes without telling us, and then gets upset at us when the customer feedback is bad and we aren't reaching our predicted goals. So, recently, he told us that the reason he thinks we aren't seeing enough results is because we are manipulating our hours and not actually putting in the work we should. Until then, we each wrote down our hours manually in an Excel sheet, but with the new time tracking tool, we would see how long we were working down to the minute. We also could only log in on our desk PCs and previously approved home office devices, but not mobile, because if you are not at your desk, it does not work. After our initial shock passed and our boss left for the day, our manager called for a meeting and we came up with a plan. We would do as he says, and the most, just following the rules where possible. We would not engage in work-related conversations with him, unless we are sitting at our desk and are clocked in. Any questions by him that are asked after we are clocked out will only be answered once we clock in again the following day. Every phone call, text message or otherwise work related things outside of the office would only be answered once there was an option for us to clock in, either the next day in the office or for some of us on our home office devices. Since we no longer have the option to shift time manually, all work minutes and hours would be clocked exactly when they took place. In my country, Weekends pay better, Sundays have to be paid double, and working after 8pm warrants additional financial benefits by law. Previously, if we needed to post something real quick or had a question, we would just add the weekend hours or late time to the upcoming Monday, basically out of goodwill, but no more of that. We would stop any independent activity, like posting on social media or writing an email and would send him everything to approve before following through. After about a week, our boss was so fed up with this that he gave us the option to clock in from our mobile devices, so he could get a more immediate response to his questions. However, this, of course, led to us clocking in way more frequently, since, as I said, he likes to micromanage and is therefore asking a lot of questions. I'm happy to report that as of 2024, we have abolished the system again and regained most of our independence. And even though our boss is still mad about how we exploited the system, it brought the team closer together and hopefully taught him a lesson. The last story is called Don't Bother Calling. I used to live in an apartment building that had shops on the main level. The building next door was the same. The two buildings shared a wall. My building had assigned parking and yellow paper notes to put in our car windows. A restaurant opened up in the building next door. Their owner, 
manager and staff began parking in my spot, as well as our neighbors. I spoke to the owner, who said she would talk to them again, but didn't think it would help. They were even parking in her spot. Every night I would get home, call them and ask that the vehicle be moved. I was getting tired of this, when one night they put the manager on, because they were busy and didn't have time to deal with my request. He did do it, but told me they wouldn't do it again and I was to stop calling them. I suggested they stop parking in my assigned spot. He told me he had too many staff to control where they parked and he was sure they were not parking in my spot and it was probably a customer. You know, because customers always park behind a business and I didn't walk around to the front to get in. The next time I worked, I worked evening shifts, I got home and this time there was a Range Rover parked in my spot. I dutifully called the tow truck and not the restaurant. I had to wait for a second tow truck because the first one was not equipped to move a vehicle of that type. Something about being jacked up and stuff. They explained it and the rate was because I didn't know enough to be able to answer their questions about the truck so they could send out the right truck first. They towed it and I went in and went to bed. A few hours later I was awakened by a phone call from the towing company. I had told the owner and he was telling them that it was his parking spot and that I had no right to tow him. They were going to bill me for the tow. I told the caller about my landlord's parking permits, the numerous phone calls to have them move, about being told not to bother them anymore and that his restaurant was in the next building with a separate parking lot. We said goodbye and I never heard anything more about it. I also was able to park in my spot after. I told my neighbor and he told me that just to be safe, I should tell the owner of the other building. I popped into her shop and told her. She replied, you told the Range Rover. I said yes. She started to laugh and basically said, good for you. And told me that it was the restaurant owner's truck. Still makes me smile when I think of it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now, I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.